Hello and welcome to this video where we will be talking about ethics and modern medicine. In this video session, we'll be talking about the re we will be recapping the four pillars of medical ethics. We will be talking through an example BMAT question. We will be doing an ethical dilemma. We will be walking through that and we will be doing an example interview question. So first of all, let's recap the four pillars of medical ethics. At this point, I will be introducing a one minute break. And in the one minute break, we want you to write something down on paper about what you think the four pillars are, or if you know what they are, if you can remember the four pillars and then define them. So I urge you to start writing now and I'm not going to speak for the next minute, so you can do this. If you wish to just see the answers, you can fast forward until uh, one minute forward from now and you will be able, I will resume talking. One minute starts now. Thirty seconds are up. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So we will now be talking about what the four pillars are. The first one is autonomy. Does the decision respect an individual's right to make their own decisions? In most cases, patients make their own decisions and they have the right to make their own decisions. And if they wish something is not good, despite medical advice, then they are allowed to revoke the doctor's uh, advice. There are, of course, except, uh, exceptions to every rule and there are to autonomy as well. In other sessions, you may have heard of Gillick competence, which we do talk about in another session. Or you may think uh, you may um, you may have heard about lasting power of attorney, which patients may give to other people, or even the Mental Health Capacity Act, and we will talk about these in a different session. Beneficence: Does the decision benefit the individual? All decisions that doctors make should be with good intent for the individual patient, and if they are not, then this decision should not be made because that is one of the core functions of a doctor uh, is to help the individual patient. Non-maleficence, does the decision harm the individual emotionally or physically? Non-maleficence is, um, is sort of reiterating what beneficence says in that any decision should not harm or do as little harm as possible to a patient. So uh, try and harm them physically as little as possible and, um, and harm them emotionally as little as possible. And justice, is the decision legal and fair? And are parents being treated equally? We will be talking about these four principles in every single session. And not only this, but it's very important that you remember these four pillars as they're quite key for your medical application. It is not uncommon for examiners in MMI interviews to ask about the four pillars or to ask you an ethical question in which it would be very important and uh, critical for you to bring up the four pillars to help with your reasoning when you formulate an answer. So it's very advisable that you learn these four uh, pillars as they will recur again and again and again. So we're going to try an example question. In this example question, I'm going to give everyone some time to read the entire passage and I would like everyone to try and formulate an answer. For this, I will give you four minutes. After four minutes, this video will keep running and you can keep it on for four minutes. After four minutes, I will divulge the answer and you may look at it and you may try and understand why. And I will also try and explain it a tiny bit. You may pause, you may, if you wish to just know the answer, you may wish to skip four minutes ahead in time and you will be able to find the answer rather than waiting. Your four minutes start now.
You have 30 seconds left. And that's four minutes. So if we could come back to the screen now and you can now see the, um, we're going to go through the answers. Okay, so the answer to that question was B. And just to clarify, that means that you should carry out procedure B. Since the woman has given her consent to procedure B, the doctor must go and undertake it. Even if it kills her, the woman is mentally healthy. And by that, we mean she is fit um, to make her own decisions by the Mental Capacity Act. And so she is able to make decisions for herself. If there are any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and we will try to get them. Uh, we will try get to get back to you as soon as possible. But the main reason is that if someone who is deemed fit to make their own decisions makes a decision, then the doctor must go ahead with that decision. So. We're going to go through an ethical dilemma now. So this ethical dilemma is quite common. It's called the trolley problem. There is a train hurtling down the tracks towards a junction. On the right branch of a junction, there is a man who has fallen onto the track. On the left branch, there are five workers repairing the track. You're standing by a switch which can divert the train into one of the two tracks. Which do you choose? Now, this might seem ruthless at first, but just to clarify, the train cannot be stopped, the men cannot be removed, and it must go onto one of the two branches. So, I'll give you 10 seconds to just make a quick decision about which branch you would want it to go on, which side, the right branch with one man fallen onto the track, or the left branch where there are five workers repairing the tracks. So your 10 seconds start now. So that's 10 seconds. And most people in this case scenario would say that you would divert the branch, you would divert the train onto the right branch where there is only one person. If you had to sacrifice one person to save five people. And that would be, um, obviously, hopefully this would never occur in real life, this situation. However, uh, the reasoning behind that is that by ethics, you want to save as many people as possible, which at this point is five people. However, this is, although it's still ethically very difficult to try and uh, to be condemning a person to death, um, especially in this case, the problem can actually be extended to make it more complicated and difficult. What if we say that the man on the right was a child? So the single person that fell onto the track was a child. So now on the right track, we have one child that's fallen onto the track. And then on the left, uh, on the left track, let's say that the five workers who were on the left track were all married with children. These types of questions are called dilemmas. They don't have a straightforward answer. However, doctors have to deal with these kinds of situations regularly, and it is up to them which option they choose. So obviously doctors would not be facing the trolley problem. However, there are very difficult ethical dilemmas that doctors will have to deal with. So I, again, will give you one minute to think about both of those options, and I want you to come up with a sort of a reasoning for this time, would you go on the right branch or the left branch, bearing in mind that the right branch now has a child that's fallen onto it, and the left branch has the five workers repairing the track, and all these people who are repairing the track are married with children. Your one minute starts now. As always, if you wish to go and just look at the answer, please skip one minute forward in the video and we will start discussing this. But your one minute starts now.
so as we said, please comment in the uh, comment section or in the chat box um, wherever applicable. So we're going to do an example interview question, and obviously we can't do this live. So what we would hope you do is that you try and write something down for this. Should euthanasia be legalized in the UK? I will give you six minutes for this. You may get few uh, less time in the actual interview, or you may get more time, but I think here is an apt time. Please feel free to rewind the video and look through some of the key topics we've discussed and to answer this question. Or possibly you might want to try and do it from memory, see how much you've recalled from this from today's video and from today's session. So please, please, please go ahead and try to answer this question with some sort of reasoning about should euthanasia be legalized in the UK. To provide some context, euthanasia is illegal in the UK as of uh, right now. So your six minutes start now.
Okay, so that's six minutes up and we will resume. So some background information just to tell you about. So euthanasia is also known as assisted suicide. It is the act of deliberately ending a person's life in order to relieve their suffering. It is currently illegal in the UK, as I previously mentioned. However, it is legal in countries like Switzerland. Organizations like Dignitas carry out euthanasia with no legal repercussions. So it's quite important to realize that euthanasia is a controversial issue and has different policies around the world. Let's do an example interview question. So let's link euthanasia to the four pillars of medical ethics. This is retained pertaining to the question that we just did and that you had six minutes to do. So autonomy. Euthanasia allows patients to make decisions for themselves. However, you could argue whether the patient has the mental capacity to make this decision. Beneficence. Euthanasia believes it relieves the stress and suffering the patient is experiencing. So it could be argued that euthanasia does good for the patient. These are both arguments for legalizing euthanasia. However, let's look at the flip side. Non-maleficence. Euthanasia disobeys this pillar as doctors are forced to cause significant harm to the patient and the family. And justice. Euthanasia disobeys this pillar as well as it is discriminatory against people with physical disabilities. Uh, Able-bodied people can legally commit suicide, but disabled people require assistance, which is illegal. So this is, it's, it's quite a controversial question and there's no um, right or wrong answer. It depends on the people you ask and it depends on opinions, but it is important to link everything to the four pillars of ethics to make a good decision about what you think or to formulate an opinion or to formulate an argument. In one of the many bonus features that we have in the Vimeo series, we'd like to add book recommendations about different topics. And the book recommendation I have added here today is called Medical Ethics, a very short introduction. So this book is written by author Tony, Ho author Tony Hope and is a concise summary of many topical ethical issues, arguments, and is easily approachable. It's a very good read, and I personally myself found it very informative. It is just 168 pages, but provides a rich overview of medical ethics, which is something that could be asked frequently in medical school interviews. So I highly recommend you pick up this book and read it. I believe it's available on Kindle as well as Amazon and you can buy it. Um, you know, hopefully you should buy it soon and uh, have a read. Especially before you go into uh, your medical school interviews or application. That is all for today's session and we would love for you to contact us if you wish. Our Instagram is at The Medical Debate where you can see uh, updates about our latest live events and our email is themedicaldebate at gmail.com where you can feel free to talk to us about any issues you might have or if there's just questions you might want to ask us. Thank you very much for coming to this session and we hope you um, look at more of our uh, videos and tutorials about medical ethics and some other medical topics.